Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie, and today we'll hit Texas Instruments stock, the semiconductor manufacturer that's been trading sideways for the past year. Over the past year, the stock is up only 7.36%, but over the past five days alone, the stock is up over 5.12% in value. So with a swift rebound in the price of Texas Instruments recently, the question naturally becomes, is the stock now overvalued, or is there still a buying opportunity present? Well today, I'm going to be answering that for you. I'm going to be breaking down the business, focusing on all the key factors. It's financial strength, profitability, growth to management, then give you a current valuation and price target for the stock going forward, telling you if Texas Instruments is a buy, hold, or sell at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So opening up our screen here, we're going to start off by assessing the financial strength of Texas Instruments. How financially strong is the company, and how likely is it that Texas Instruments can endure a financial downturn going forward? Well, if we come down here and have a look at the financial strength metrics, and of course when assessing the financial strength of any large company, there's really one key metric we focus on, and that is the cash to debt ratio. The cash the business currently has on hand to meet their short-term and long-term debts outstanding. And the current cash debt ratio for Texas Instruments is 1.26, a fairly advantageous cash to debt ratio. This cash to debt ratio indicates that for every dollar of debt on the company's balance sheet, they have $1.26 in cash to meet that debt obligation, a fantastic cash to debt position. This indicates that if the management so desired, they could instantaneously pay down all the debt on their balance sheet and still retain the equivalent of $0.26 cents relative to that one-to-one -one ratio to continue to reinvest and grow their operations going forward, a fantastic cash to debt position. When you combine this favorable cash to debt position with the massive amounts of free cash flow being generated by Texas Instruments core operations on a daily basis, basis, you begin to realize just how financially strong this company is. This great degree of financial strength is accentuated by the high Altman score the company has been assigned. The company has been assigned an Altman score of 14.56, indicating a great degree of safety with the business and very little risk of financial default going forward. In the event of a financial downturn, Texas Instruments is extremely well positioned with a notable amount of cash on hand and consistent cash flows flowing in from operations, allowing them not only to endure a financial downturn, but also reinvest and re-stimulate growth through opportunistic acquisitions coming out of a pool back. So on a financial strength basis, Texas Instruments is outstanding. But that's simply the financial strength of Texas Instruments. Now let's have a look at profitability. Let's see how profitable Texas Instruments is as a company. So if we come over here to profitability, of course, when assessing the profitability of any large company, there's really four key things we focus on. Number one is the operating margins. Number two, the net margins. Number three, the returns on equity. Number four, the returns on assets. So if we come down here and start off with the margins, you can see operating margins of 48.1% and net margins of 41.61% absolutely astonishing. These are absolutely fantastic margins. Not only in the semiconductor industry as a whole, but across businesses more broadly, these margins are simply world class. They indicate that for every dollar of revenue that comes into Texas Instruments business, they retain about 41% of that as pure profit. Absolutely astounding in terms of profitability. These profit margins are exceeding NVIDIA, they're exceeding TSMC, and they're even giving up to the level of businesses in other sectors, such as Visa and MasterCard, which are the absolute pinnacle in terms of net profitability. On a net margins basis alone, Texas Instruments is one of the single most profitable companies in the world. Outstanding margins. So on a margins basis alone, Texas Instruments is world class. But now let's have a look at returns on equity and returns on assets to see how the business and its management are allocating their capital. So if we come down here to returns on equity and returns on assets, now when assessing a wonderful business, we typically look for returns on equity and returns on assets around 20%. So let's see what Texas is producing. Returns on equity of 71.78% absolutely astonishing. These returns on equity are unworldly and absolutely fantastic. Returns on equity of 71.78% is obviously well in excess of our 20% target and indicates not only an immense degree of quality with the underlying business of Texas Instruments, but also a great degree of management competency. The management within Texas know how to allocate their capital well to make high returns on equity, and that's evident in this astonishing returns on equity figure. Coming down to returns on assets, now once again, although this returns on assets isn't quite as high as the 71% returns on equity, returns on assets of 36.21% is still absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. With a market cap of $172 billion, to be making returns on assets of 32% is unheard of. Absolutely astonishing returns on assets and indicative of the immense degree of quality in the underlying business of Texas Instruments. So on a profitability basis, across all the metrics we measure profitability on, Texas Instruments is simply world class, one of the single most profitable companies in the world. So on a financial strength basis, the business is well positioned by virtue of a moderate degree of cash on hand and massive cash flows flowing in from operations. And on a profitability basis, the business is essentially unmatched in terms of profitability. But now let's get an idea of how much Texas Instruments is worth as a business. Because although it may be a wonderful company, if it's not trading at a fair valuation, then buying into the stock right now could lead to losses in the short to medium term. So let's come down here and have a look at some basic valuation ranks. 
Of course, when assessing a business utilizing these basic valuation ranks, there's a lot of different metrics we can use to assess the business. We've got the peg ratio, current ratio, quick ratio, cash ratio, PB ratio, PS ratio, all these different fancy, fancy ratios. But when it comes to assessing a business utilizing these simple ratios, there's really only one I use, and that's the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio. And the current price to earnings ratio for Texas Instruments is 24.01 indicating a moderate degree of growth assumption priced into the stock going forward. Investors in the broader market believe that Texas Instruments can continue to grow at a fairly high rate going forward over the next 10 years and beyond. Growth rates on an earnings per share basis and free cash flow basis around 13% going forward over the next 10 years, and that's what this moderate PE indicates. Whether or not this PE indicates the company is over or undervalued is up for debate. What we are going to do later on is run a full DCF analysis, breaking down the company's earnings per share and free cash flow on a more granular level to give you a better picture of exactly how much the company is worth and exactly how much you should be paying for each individual share of the company. So keep watching for that one. But before we get started on our DCF analysis, I want to break down some basic financial data associated with Texas Instruments. So if we come over here, we can see the revenue and net income for Texas Instruments between 2009 and 2020. You can see back in 2009, revenue was around 10,427 and net income of 1,470. And then in 2020, revenue of 14,461 and net income of 5,595. So you can see, although there has been a degree of growth over the past decade, it's certainly not astonishing growth. Texas Instruments is very much a mature semiconductor manufacturer. Not an exponentially growing company such as AMD or Nvidia, but nor as slow growth as someone like Intel. Simply steady growth on a net income and revenue basis from a Texas Instruments over the past decade. Net income growth in particular has been fairly impressive, moving all the way up from around 1,700 back in 2012, to now around 5,595 in 2020. So impressive net income growth in particular over the past decade. Coming over here to the cash to debt basis of the company over time, you can also see a very similar trend, a very mature company, not accumulating more and more cash on hand over years, just holding a steady amount of cash on hand over the past decade. Cash on hand back in 2009 was around 2,929, and now in 2020, cash on hand of around 6,568. So you can see steady increases to the cash on hand, but no giant jumps in terms of the cash held by the company. Over time, the company has begun to employ more debt. Starting back in 2011, they began to employ a significant amount of debt on their balance sheet. Debt on hand of 5,592, relative to a cash on hand of 2,900. And after initially reducing this debt, Back in 2016, they began to increase the debt on hand with cash in hand to meet. So you can see going forward between 2016 and 2020, more and more debt being accumulated on the balance sheet, but also with a large degree of cash in hand to meet that debt obligation, leaving the company in a fairly agile financial position. If they so desired, they could pay down almost all the debt outstanding on their balance sheet and still have cash in hand to reinvest and grow going forward. When you combine this with the high free cash flow nature of the business, you realize Texas Instruments is in a very advantageous financial position. Very well positioned on a financial basis, and I have very little concern with the financial stability of the company. Coming down here to returns on capital, you can see again, fairly consistent returns on capital over the past decade, and in fact, an inclining trend between 2013 and 2020. Very, very impressive returns on capital increasing over time, despite the maturity of the business, which is a very unique and very impressive thing to see from a mature company. Returns on capital at a high of 41% in 2020, despite the maturity of the business, and that's very, very impressive. Over time, we'd expect returns on capital of a mature company to somewhat decline over time. As the business grows and expands, naturally returns on capital usually decrease going forward. But Texas Instruments has had inclining returns on capital over the past decade, exceptionally impressive. If these returns on capital were to decline somewhat going forward over the next 10 years, more back down to that kind of 16 to 21% level, that would be absolutely fine and still would be exceptional returns from a company of this mature nature. So that's some basic financial data associated with Texas Instruments, the PE ratio to give you an idea of what the company may be worth, and also some profitability and financial strength data to give you an idea of how the business is performing. But if we really want to understand what Texas Instruments is worth as a business and how much we should be paying for each individual share of the company, then we'd have to run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. And as Warren Buffett always says, the value of any business is the cash flow that it will return to its shareholders between now and Judgment Day. And that's exactly what a DCF tells us. We're going to run a DCF on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much earnings the company is bringing in and how much of that is translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So if we come down here, we're going to start off on an earnings per share basis. If we come down here, we can see the earnings per share growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Over the past 10 years, it's been around 13.3%, 5 years, 16.7%. Over the past 1 year, at a heightened growth rate with increased demand for semiconductors of 47.3%.
Do I believe this exceptionally high growth rate will perpetuate going into the future? Do I believe Texas Instruments can continue to grow at 47.3% going forward over the next decade? Absolutely not. This growth rate is far too high and a more reasonable growth rate for the company going forward, taking into account both the mature nature of the business and the advantageous sector in which it operates, I think a more reasonable growth rate would be somewhere between the 10 and 5 year earnings per share growth rates of the company. So being slightly more conservative on their 5 year growth rate, we're going to input a growth rate of 15% on an earnings per share basis going forward over the next decade. This takes into account both the existing maturity of the business and also the potential runway for growth going forward given the ever-increasing demand for semiconductor products. So utilizing a growth rate of 15% going forward over the next decade with our discount rate of 8%, 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market and thus a fair rate at which to discount our cash flows, then our earnings per share figure of $7.79 taken down here for 12 months trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price target of $231.15, indicating about 20% potential upside to the stock and an advantageous opportunity for both value investors and long-term growth investors looking to pick up a wonderful company trading below its intrinsic value. But that's simply an earnings per share valuation of Texas Instruments. Now let's conduct a free cash flow valuation to give us an idea of how much those earnings are translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. When it comes to valuing a mature company such as Texas Instruments, Oftentimes, a free cash flow valuation can give us a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth. So now let's switch over to free cash flow. If we come down here, we can see the free cash flow growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Over the past 10 years, it's been around 12.7%, 5 years, 11.7%. Over the past 1 year, again, another heightened growth rate tied to increased demand for their products of 38.5%. Once again, do I believe this heightened growth rate can continue going forward? Do I believe they will continue to compound at 38% on a free cash flow basis over the next decade? Absolutely not. That growth rate is far too high and a more reasonable growth rate once more would be in line with the five and 10 year growth rates of the company. Given the maturing nature of Texas Instruments as a business, I believe going forward over the next decade, free cash flow will become more creative on their balance sheet relative to what it has been in previous years. So taking that into account, I believe a slightly higher growth rate on a free cash flow basis relative to these 10 year and five year figures would be justified going forward over the next decade. So with that in mind, we're gonna utilize the same growth rate as we did on an earnings per share basis for our free cash flow valuation a growth rate of 15% on a free cash flow basis going forward over the next decade. This takes into account the likelihood of free cash flow becoming more creative on their balance sheet going forward over the next 10 years relative to the past 10 years. So utilizing that growth rate of 10% going forward over the next decade with our discount rate of 8%, 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market and thus a fair rate at which to discount our cash flows. Then a free cash flow per share figure of $7.65 taken down here for 12 month trailing basis, we come out to a fair value price target of $226.99, signifying that once again, Texas Instruments appears to be trading notably below its intrinsic value, providing an advantageous opportunity for both value oriented investors looking to pick up a company below its intrinsic value and long-term growth investors looking to pick up a wonderful business and hold it for the long term. So as you can see on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis, it appears as if Texas Instruments is trading about 17 to 19% below its intrinsic value. But which of these valuations is more suitable for the company? Which of these valuations gives us a better idea of exactly how much Texas Instruments is worth? Well, given the industry in which Texas Instruments is operating, the semiconductor industry, and given the growth nature of the business at present, exhibiting consistent growth going forward, I believe it's more advantageous to value the business on an earnings per share basis rather than a free cash flow basis. Given the market and investors' tendency more broadly to value growth companies based upon their earnings per share rather than their free cash flow, I believe an earnings per share valuation will give us a more accurate picture of exactly how much the company is worth. So with that in mind, my current valuation for Texas Instruments is going to be $231.15, signifying about 90% potential short-term upside to the stock and that the stock is trading notably below its intrinsic value. Texas Instruments provides both an advantageous opportunity for the value investor and growth investor. Going forward, given the industry in which Texas Instruments is operating and the ever-increasing demand for its products within the semiconductor industry, I believe it has a wonderful and consistent runway for growth going forward. Going, over, going forward over the next 10 to 15 years, I believe they will continue to perpetuate growth at a meaningful rate around that 15% growth rate going forward over the next 10 to 15 years, and thus provides a highly advantageous buying opportunity. With the company trading below its intrinsic value right now, I believe the stock is a buy. So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed analysis of Texas Instruments stock, a company with outstanding financial strength by virtue of the reasonable amounts of cash in hand and consistent cash flows flowing in from operations, profitability that is simply unmatched, astonishing operating margins, net margins, returns on equity, and returns on assets, simply world class in terms of profitability, and appearing to trade slightly below its intrinsic value at present, providing a highly advantageous opportunity for both value investors, 
and long-term growth investors. I believe Texas Instruments has a wonderful runway for growth going forward, and given the discount to its intrinsic value the company is currently trading at, the stock for me right now is a buy. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something more about Texas Instruments as a company, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.